Hey Cancers, welcome to April 2018. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I am going to talk about the free photo reading, but I'm going to leave it to last because I go on a full tangent, so <laughs> I'm going to leave it to last. First, I want to really talk about what's going on in the sky because I know last month was pretty intense. This month, we're definitely still feeling those effects and two planets are going retrograde. Wah, wah. So um, what recently happened on March 31st, there was the full moon in Libra. So that was really, especially as Cancers, you guys, like you guys are so affected by the moon. So it's really easy and I actually have so much jealousy because I have like no Cancer in my chart. Um, but yeah, if you are sun, moon or rising Cancer, you can really track your emotions through the lunar phases. So for instance, on the full moon, you're going to want to cry. You're going to want to release. You're going to want to, you know, do what you need to do. You're going to need some sort of release. And you can really use the full moon to do that. And then on the new moon, you guys are so blessed because you can use that new moon to bring things in. So the new moon, you don't see it in the sky, right? In the full moon, you do. So on the new moon, excuse me, you start to, that's where you need to have trust. You know, you realize you don't see the moon in the sky on the new moon, but you're like, you know that it's there, right? And that's the same with starting to really manifest things into your life using that new moon, having faith that it's there. It's just you vibrationally aligning yourself with it. So the full, the full moon in Libra that just passed on March 31st, and we're still feeling the effects even on April 3rd, um, is all about relationships. So that's another thing. If you just Google around the lunar phases and what zodiac sign it, it's in, you can get even more knowledge on how it's affecting you. So that full moon in Libra, you couple the release of the full moon with the Libra energy, which is all about relationships, harmony, balance, cooperation, partnerships, contracts, um, you know, employee, employer, friendships, things like that. Really, really so much relationships in a nutshell. And that's when you can start to really release some things that are no longer serving you when it comes to the relationships in your life, okay? And you start to see them for what they are. Like this full moon, especially with it being so close to Easter, I'm looking around at my family, I'm like, okay, I love you guys, <laughs> you know? And I'm a Libra, so it really affected me. I'm like, okay, I love my family. <laughs> like, I started to release any judgment I had, started to release any criticism I had, and I just said, okay, you guys are perfect for me in every way. You're teaching me a lot. You accept me. You're supportive. Um, things like that. So that's what, that's what was happening March 31st. March 22nd, if you guys remember, is Mercury retrograde. So it's now about to go direct on April 15th. Thank the Lord. But the shadow period lasts until May 3rd. So still be really cognizant about what you're signing. I'm so insane. Like we, my husband and I literally just signed a new lease, like literally in the peak of Mercury retrograde. And I'm like, well, maybe because I'm an astrologer, it won't affect us. No, of course, of course, of course. We're like, should we, is this a good choice? Like I'm about to have a baby or like, can we afford this? Like that's what Mercury retrograde does. It kind of just really forces you inward. Whereas before it'd be a lot easier to just be like, do to do signing off, signing my life away. And now it's like, wait, let me get introspective and really make sure that this is the right decision. So as long as you're following through with those um, feelings and that kind of inward force then I think you'll be okay <laughs> April 15th is also the new moon in Aries so like I said if you new moon all about starting something new and really manifesting what you want in your life especially as a cancer um it being an Aries Aries is the leader it's the first sign of the zodiac it's dynamic it's um independent it's all about pioneering and leading the way so if you're thinking about starting something new this is the new moon to do that on April 15th. So start writing down what you want to see manifested into your life over the next six months because the full moon in Aries is when you're going to start to see that cultivating into your world. It's it's really cool, especially when you write it down and you look back, you're like, holy crap. Okay, let's talk about those retrogrades. Saturn goes retrograde on April 17th. So Saturn is, it's the restrictive planet. It's the planet that, you know ask forces forces us to use our strength our inner strength um because it kind of makes saturn retrograde will kind of make things a little bit harder just to make sure that it's what you actually want so that's going to last from now until september 6th 
So that's your summer, you know, where you want to just let loose and have fun, but Saturn's going to just be like pulling you back just a little bit, which is good because you're not going to go off the rails, you know. And then Pluto goes retrograde on April 22nd. So Pluto is all about obsession, inner work, inner transformations, all the taboo subjects, sex, death, taxes, yada, yada, yada. Um, so Pluto, Pluto is a good plan to go retrograde because you really can go inward about where you want to transform from the inside out. And then when it goes uh, back direct, people start to see and, and you also start to see how much you've transformed. Um, April 29th, we have the full moon in Scorpio. Okay, so that's another full moon where you're going to want to release any issues you have with other people. Uh, Scorpios can be a little bit competitive at times, especially because Jupiter is in Scorpio. It's also a fixed sign. So when it comes to changes, um, the Scorpio energy needs to initiate those changes, but to have changes thrust upon them can be kind of frustrating for them, but they are very transformative. So they're able to take those changes and transform themselves through it, uh, but they kind of need, they can't be scared into it. So a full moon in Scorpio is going to allow you to release anything that holds you back when it comes to fear. Fear, okay, when it comes to like those deep hidden issues and those deep down fears and desires. Okay, so that is what's going on in the sky. Now let's get started on your reading. So the two cards that have already popped out, Cancer, are Strength. Strength, let me show you. Strength. And the Five of Wands. So having strength when it comes to this fight for change, fight for freedom, uh, competition, and just holding your own. And it's going to be a little bit of a power struggle. You're going to have to kind of tame your inner beast when it comes to this conflict or competition, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing because you have that strength. You have your cardinal sign, which means that you are a leader. You're also a fixed sign, which means that you're steadfast. Uh, and you can survive something like this. You can definitely survive something like this. However, when it comes to those changes, it might be a little bit difficult just because it um, it's hard for the fixed signs to really, like I said, with Scorpio, which is another fixed sign, it's really hard for the Cancer. Wait, why am I saying fixed? It's cardinal. Cardinal water. Sorry about that. I don't know why I always think of Cancer as a fixed sign. Yeah, it's cardinal. So, yeah, cardinal cardinal water. So it's not that you guys are fixed. It's just that you want to be the ones to initiate the beginnings, kind of like the Libra and the, and the Aries. You want to be the ones to initiate that beginning. So you guys are cardinals where changes are nice for you as long as you're the one who's initiated it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. That's weird. I don't know why I thought that. Hmm. Okay. So that's what your subconscious wants you to know right now. Now let's see what the theme of the reading is. So it's based on what you've been giving, whether or not it's balanced. And the giving is based on something that you've created. You've, you've nurtured slash created this giving. And now you have so many more opportunities. But because of how much you've been giving to what you personally created, you're like, should I let go and start to, you know, bring in and focus on these other opportunities? But you can't have these other opportunities if you're so focused on this one thing. And you're working hard to hold on to this one thing that you've given your, your power away to to create and manifest into this world. Um, there's a King of Wands energy here that is affecting it. Somebody that you're pinned to in a way. Makes me think about, um, uh, I don't know if you guys ever went to a Catholic school where you have to wear uh, the kilts. And the different pins, like where the pins were, indicated what your status was. So like up was taken, down was single, sideways was bisexual, slanted was, I don't know. And then like, uh, apparently, like this is Catholic school, but um, the beads that you put on it was how many uh, pregnancies you've had, like, or something like that. <laughs> where, now I'm looking back, I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> but there's something with... Um, this king of wands where they want to know what your status is. They want to know where you're at. They're like, okay, they wish that they had a pin on your kilt where it said what you are because they want to know your availability. Um, and they've been taking up a lot of your mind power and a lot of your time, which is turning a little bit negative because there's some other female involved. There's another female involved here and you're kind of like, 
why are you so focused on what I'm creating and what I'm giving my power to um, and, and taking up my thought power? Why are you so focused on locking yourself up with me when you have somebody? You have this Queen of Pentacles. So because of that, you're, you're going to start to get a little bit more positive, a little more creative. But that is turning into some greed when it comes to a partnership. Um, and you are going to eventually have to move on with your power just to build back up your reputation. Because right now, uh, it's, it's just kind of a give and take. One day, you're doing great. The next day, it's not. And, you know, you just need to get your power back, okay? So this King of Wands, he needs to, he needs to let go. He needs to let go. Oh, sh I shouldn't say he. Um, this Queen, King of Wands is, is masculine energy, but it could be any sex just embodying that, that energy. Um, but yeah, he, he wants his cake and to eat it too. <laughs> um. Yeah, he's just being greedy when it comes to partnerships, when it comes to positivity, when it com comes to love and creation, and yeah, you know, it's, it's quite the balancing act for you right now, Cancer. You right now, soulmate. <laughs> so that's what this reading is about. I'm wondering if the King of Wands is this soulmate. You'll know. It's the first, it's as soon as you think it. Whenever I ask, is this person your soulmate, if you're going... Uh, then that's no. Like, you know it in your heart when somebody is your soulmate. So when I ask, is this King of Wands your soulmate? And you say, absolutely, then that's who this is about. But it should be the first person you're thinking about, okay? Soulmate. That's the situation. Obstacle and the aid to this soulmate is Queen of Wands. Queen of Wands. Who also popped up in the Gemini reading, funny enough. Queen of Wands. Um, what symbol is this? I feel like it's the pie symbol. So, either very brainy or a great baker. <laughs> or both, you know? Why, why can't it be both? Um, this is a female who is very empowered. Uh, definitely has her footing. And, you know, she really, she really makes you feel empowered as well. Like, definitely makes you feel... She's, like, you know, very empowering just being around her, okay? Um, this Queen of Wands can cause some headaches, for sure, just because she can talk your ear off, okay? And she also, other people have called her snake-like. Like, other people have been like, careful Cancer, you know? And that's just the, I think that's just the fire energy that this Queen of Wands has in contrast to your water energy. Because this person has a lot of fight, like a fiery temper, things like that where it's frustrating for you because as a Cancer, you feel things so intently where you can't just move on so quick. Whereas a fire sign, they blow up and then they fizzle out and then they're over it, especially when it's like a moon in Aries. Emotionally, they're angry and it's like, whoa, and then they're over it like an hour later. Whereas opposed to a Cancer where when you guys are upset, <laughs> you know, that's not something that you can just easily get over. Like you really need to work through your emotions before you can clear it. So this person, you're kind of a little bit of a wet blanket when it comes to them. Um, and that's how they view you. So naturally, it's how you feel. You find yourself coming across to them because it's all about perspective, right? So if they're looking at you as, as a wet blanket, when you're around them, you're going to feel like you're that wet blanket. So this person is an obstacle and an aid to your soulmate. So hindering the soulmate, but also helping the soulmate, okay? Subconsciously, Cancer, working hard, really focused on work, really focused on work and power. But you are thinking that something is not fair because of how much you've been working. So you've kind of internalized all of this power that you've been gaining, you've kept it underneath the surface, although you've been working so hard to build yourself up and you've been so focused on work, you haven't brought it out for the world to see, especially for this Queen of Wands to see and the King of Wands to see. It's been kind of just in your little domain um, and you're thinking it's not fair that you have to work so hard, but you haven't really shown people just how hard you actually have been working. You're, I think you're expecting people to just see that, but it is time to kind of take on more of a air sign energy. And on the 24th, when Venus enters Gemini, that should be a little bit easier for you to really just speak your, your part and say, listen, like I've been working hard. You may not see it because I don't brag about it or I don't complain about it constantly, but I've been doing a lot for, for this, this, that. I'm doing a lot for, for you, for you, for you. 
And it's just about figuring out whether or not it's worth it, whether or not it's fair, okay? Doing a lot of rest at home recently. Yeah, and you're starting to wonder like where your investments are, are lying. You're like, okay, I work so hard. How can I take my investments and how hard I've, I've worked to grow something really important and something really beautiful, okay? Family and friends, we got some, a lot going on for family and friends. They got some messages coming in. Um, I'm also seeing music. So messages, a message that will be like music to their ears. So wait for that because that's going to be, that's going to be nice. It might be spotty at first where you're kind of looking at it like, is it too good to be true? But because family and friends have been working on this dream for so long, sorry. It's actually going to really build them up. And I'm seeing an N and a backward C. So an N and a backward C. So the message could be coming from somebody with an N in their first, middle, or last name and a C in their first, middle, or last name, um, and it's somebody from the past. So some, some work that they've done in the past is now cultivated, and that's what's really giving you a lot of life when it comes to the soulmate relationship, because you're starting to see, like, okay, <laughs> like, you know, with the new moon, I can create something new, too. My family and friends, they're getting all these amazing um, opportunities and benefits coming in. Why can't I? I've been working so hard. I'm starting to really see where I'm, where my investments are growing. It's time to really put that outward. And it's because your family and friends have made the initiative, have done what you in a way has t have taught them to do with your cardinal energy by just putting yourself out there. There's no point of working hard and then not putting it out into the universe. Hope and fear is because I think that you want people to see how hard you're working, but you fear it as well. So you need to really scale back on that. You know, is it too boastful? Um, is it something that you don't want people to see and to recognize and admire you for how hard you were working? It's underneath the surface, but why wouldn't you want to really show that to the world and show that to the people that you care about? Is it because, you know, I don't know. You should definitely scale back and like think about, could be coming from your parents. Another thing, it could be coming from your first job. Like a lot of the times we look back and we're like, holy crap. So your first job, you know, were you admired or recognized in some way, in a positive way, and because of that, that turned into something negative, and now you have a fear of kind of showing people how how well you've done or how far you've come, or, you know, did that happen to your parent, especially your the parent that you look up to the most, did it happen to a friend of yours? Really scale back and be like, why would I be afraid to show the world what I've created, what I've nurtured, um, and where I've put a lot of my power, and to be admired for that, you know? Really, really scale it back. Do you, is it just because you don't feel worthy, or you don't feel like it's time, like you've done enough in order to start gaining recognition and accolades for how hard you've worked? Because it is time, <laughs> and it's time for you to get a piece of that pie. You know, you've worked so hard, it's time for you to really put yourself out there and say, listen, like, I'm doing well. <laughs> Outcome is manifesting whatever you want. Like I said, that new moon in Aries on the 15th, whatever you want. You've worked hard. You've put your you've put your uh, your investments out there based on how hard you've worked. It's time to just start initiating some changes, especially because you've earned it and it's only fair. Once you do that, Cancer, look at how prominent and abundant and happy you know, and fulfilled, you're going to be, you're, you can jump hoops, you know, this is something where you're going to be, you're going to feel like a, a Disney princess, you're going to feel like a Disney character who's just talking to, to animals, you know, and every is just working in your favor, even the animal, you know, I think about Cinderella when even the animals are helping her get dressed in the morning, <laughs> like people are all going to be coming together to support you as long as you start to show them that that's what you deserve, especially when it comes to the soulmate especially when it comes to your soulmate. So using the Queen of Wands um, as an as a obstacle and an aid, so using this, this energy and this person as a way to say, I'm not resting anymore when it comes to my soulmate. I've worked hard, and it's only fair that I manifest my abundance when it comes to this soulmate relationship and when it comes to your life in general. Okay, so I'm going to pull an indigo card for you Cancers. And then I'll talk to you about uh, the free photo reading, which I'm pretty sure I offered you guys last month. But okay. Okay. 
What do you guys need to know? Cancer needs to know for April 2018. Hope you Whoops. Okay. A couple cards popped out. Ooh. So, as usual, everything has deeper meaning. One card fell on the ground on my foot. So it's something that you have to actually work for. Um, when you think about a foot, you think about walking your path. And that means it's time to create. <laughs> and this is definitely based back to the manifestation. So sometimes it can be like time to create an actual physical thing. But I'm thinking that this is time to create something in your life and say, you know, I have the power now to really think about how I want to make some changes. And then just do a vision board or do what you need to do in order to bring that energy into your life. Align yourself with it. The card that was face down is something that you haven't acknowledged yet. And that is show appreciation. Okay, so like I said, you've got a lot going on this month. Uh, so it's time to really, that's, this is completely related. I started three months ago writing down, um, and I've done it, I've done it years before, but I started again, I restarted writing down 10 things a day that I'm grateful for. And holy, like when you live your life with a, with a grateful heart, you can't complain about anything. Like it just changes. You look at the world completely differently. It's like when you just start meditating and then you look at water for the first time and you're like, it's alive. You know what I mean? Like things like that. Showing appreciation, especially for what you already have, will just tell the universe to give you more things to be grateful for. So a lot of the times that's what the creation is. It's just creating kind of like that I guess you could call it like a lie because for instance, uh, I'll give you a very good example that is happening in my life right now. Um, I've been living, we had to move back in with my father-in-law for the past like nine months and he's a misogynist, he's a drunk, he's, we love him, but he is who he is essentially and we're living in like in a thousand square foot little tiny place with him like in his second bedroom, okay? And I'm about to pop. You know, I got pregnant as soon as we moved in. I've been here for my entire pregnancy, which, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and what I did, I started doing it some, from January. I just kept saying, I, I love my home. I'm so grateful for my perfect home that I can easily afford because it is perfect for me in every way. And I wrote that every single day. I made a vision board that has the perfect house on it. And it's funny because... We just, like I said, we just signed uh, a lease like two days ago with a month to spare. Like it was getting to a point where we're like, we're just gonna have to have the baby here. No, it was three months of me just saying, I love my perfect home. It's perfect for me in every way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So even though you don't, I've done it with jobs before too. So even if you don't have it and it's not true at the time, convincing yourself that you have it aligns you with it. So if you hate your job, if you hate, you know, what's going on with this queen of wands, if you hate how hard you've been working and you feel like you can't invest the proper energy outward, start lying to yourself. <laughs> start writing down that you have the perfect job. You have the perfect relationship. You love your soulmate. You love this person because they're this. And it just completely, it just completely changes everything. So last card is to think about it. Think about what I'm saying. I know it sounds kind of crazy and ridiculous, but I swear I wouldn't be advocating for it unless it worked. And I always advocate for it. Daily gratitude journal. If you if you already have a daily gratitude gratitude journal and it's worked wonders for you, post about it in the comments. Don't be shy. Talk about it in the comments. Tell people. Speak the truth. We all know the gratitude journal is life. Okay, now, <laughs> that being said, I want to talk to you guys about the free photo reading that I'm doing right now. So I've got one month left, like I said, and I really just want to kind of give back to the subscribers, really just want to give back saying thank you guys so much for all of your love, for your support, for your generosity, for your acceptance. Like when I started this a year ago, I was so shy and nervous, and now I get so excited to give you guys a reading. Um, so it is my way of saying thank you. Please just subscribe if you haven't already. And then we have an equal energy exchange. Um, send me your pictures.
My email is below and I'm gonna send you back just a quick little blurb of what I see. It's, it's really fun, it's really interesting. Um, it's been helping me so much with my intuition. And, you know, <laughs> I've been now looking back on old pictures and I'm like, oh my gosh. Like when you actually, when you look at your picture, there's so much knowledge there. And you guys as intuitive signs, look at some pictures and you can see it right there. You know, for instance, there was one picture where, um, where somebody's eyes were closed. And I'm like, well, there's four pictures. It was like one of those strips and this person, their eyes were closed in each picture. And I'm looking at my husband, I'm like, this person, you know, open your eyes. Like they don't see this relationship for how it is. And that's exactly what I said to the, the client. And they're like, yeah, you're right. And I'm like, well, yeah, <laughs> like it says it all there. And also the picture that you send, don't, Think about it too much because use your intuition to send the picture because you're intuitively going to know what picture I need to see in order to pull out the messages that you need to hear. Um, don't send any filtered pictures because it's just going to waste both of our time. We're just going to email you back and like send it unfiltered because uh, filters is going to create a haze and I know that you guys don't naturally have stars around your head. <laughs> so don't send any filtered pictures. Um, yeah. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. Thank you so much for all of your support. Love you guys so much. I hope you have an amazing April. And I will see you in May. And I hope that I'm carrying a baby for our, our next video. But who knows? Maybe that will be June. Love you guys. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.